Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera. I'm going to go to the other side. We're back on the floor of the Plymouth, uh, and we are on air. Jolene looks amazing today, as always. Um, we are on the, the 56 Plymouth, putting the floor in. We got this side all welded. Last time you seen, I said I was going to weld this all up solid, and I did. Uh, Jolene asked me why did I do that. Well, the car was pretty decapitated coming apart. Um, there wasn't a lot holding it together. I really wanted to secure it, and the best way to secure it is just to weld it completely, and I have it good and secured now. Um, I am going to spot weld some of it for sure, but we've got it tied together from the front front to the back, and I've got both sides done the same. So this side here is done, and the exact same thing for that side is done. Right now, what, I'm, what I have done is, is what I said I was going to do. I got some square stock from the wheel well to the wheel well with that metal down on top of it just to straighten that off. That's just tacked there for now. Um, there's going to be more done to it, but it's just tacked in place. And when you look underneath the car, you're not going to see where that metal has been cut off. You're going to see a nice piece of square stock go across. It's going to look clean because the cut mark is on the top. There's not going to be no gap on the back, no nothing. If you've ever looked at a car, that's, the floor's been cut out and pieces put, it, put in, it looks, it don't look good. I'm not saying it's not the right way to do it, but it just doesn't look that good. And I want to try to make this as most appealing as possible. So what I've got here is I've got another piece of square stock running across from this quarter panel, the inside quarter panel to the that inside quarter panel. We've got two pieces run across. The first piece is on top of the mount. I've got a big rubber there that you, you guessed it, that's boat roller. Um, that's where the mount is. And then I have another one out a little bit further. And that's the distance that the back seat had out to sit on um, on the top of the hump. So this is basically going to be a panel that comes out here. And then we'll be going down and then we'll be going for the floor. But as we have this going right now, um, I've got all my, all my doings or my measurements and all that sort of stuff, like sort of off the panel that we cut out of it. Uh, this is where the square stock, that's where the square stock's nailed on the back from the wheel well to the wheel well. Then we have another piece of square stock run right here. This is where the mount is. You can see how that mount is tilted down and then goes out. So that's the mount on um, the driver's side. This would be the mount over here on the passenger side. Um, so three, there's a piece of square stock where the floor is to make it clean. This is where the mount is, with a piece of square stock running across there. Then we have another piece of square stock running across the front because that's the end of the, where the back seat goes. Then it goes down where your feet is. So I'm using what we had to just kind of build what I'm doing now. As you can see, this tucked down, I went straight across. Uh, it does not matter. I, does not matter. I'm making our, my own floor and I do not have to do what they do. I can do what I want to do. But as we get looking in here and I put that rubber mount underneath there, basically just took the distance what they had coming down and I just put a rubber mount underneath there to hold up my square stock so I know I'm at the same distance on both sides. Um, I am not going to leave the, 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 the boat roller that length. I just, I don't feel like it's uh, a secure enough. Um, I say secure enough. I don't feel like that's the right kind of mount to have there. I have one on each side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mount to fit the mount on the frame. And uh, we're, I'm going to do that with you. So basically it's just square stock run across to try to straighten things out. When things are straight and not all these bends in it, it's just a lot easier. So if you look at What's on the floor, our panel's not going to look like that whatsoever. Our panel is going to be a nice flat panel. Uh, we're going to have a few bead rolls in it, no doubt in my mind. But this is going to be a lot easier to make than that. Uh, so um, when this floor is all cleared out, it looks to me, it's nice. Because you, you can actually see where you're going and where you're supposed to go um, with all the mess that's in here. It really does make a difference when you get it ripped out. When you get it ripped out and you can see what's going on, it does make a big difference. So I want to make a mount for the back piece of square stock. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a mount for 
this piece right here. So which, which one would you like me to make? Does it matter? Make this side. So I'm going to pull this bad boy out. Not going anywhere. Is it still where it's at? That rubber's just in there. I'm going to do this. I do not want that big piece of rubber in there. When we took the rubber mounts out of it, uh, they were about the exact same looking thing as this, but they're about, about half an inch thick. They were about half an inch thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I need a pair of scissors. I'm going to get a pair of scissors first. Sorry. Yeah, I can. She wants me to do the other side, boy. She wants me to do the other side. So that's what I'm going to do. Whatever side you want, you can come on whatever side you want to be on. And I can pull that one out just as well as I can pull this one out. Let's make the mount. These cars are all shimmed up from factory. And what I mean by shimmed up, um, if you've ever torn one apart, looking for somewhere to put my glasses, why not on my head? When you tear one of these old cars apart in the 50s and the 60s, and probably some of the 70s, all the cars are shimmed up. And what I mean by shimmed up is they use shims to get them to look right. Uh, nowadays, when you put cars together, um, the piece or the fender or whatever you're putting on is made to fit. There's no uh, adjustments. Just squaring that off. What I want to do is, that was put in there for reference. Now... I'm going to make a mount in here, and I want to make it look good. That's what I want to do. So I'm just going to do this. What I want to do is I want to make a piece of square stock. This, this heavy square stock, one inch, go down, across, and then back up. Just to make it look, and then I'll put the bolt hole, the bolt, drill a hole in the middle, and then we'll put a small mount there. We'll show you when we get it done, but this is what I'm going to do. Hmm. Sometimes this can be very aggravating to get the square where it needs to be. Just guessing right now. That's all I'm doing. Just guessing. Let's bring it down some. Just wanted the same height as that one. If I can get it the same height. Close. Fly on me. Actually, I'm just going to cut it my own by eye. Go to there. I'll make a mark here. Hmm. Make a mark there. I'm going to do this. We're going to take no special way to make this. It's just whatever you like, and that's what I'm doing. If you don't know it, that's what makes you happy, doing what you like. Now I'm just gonna cut that. So I'm making a pattern before I even start. You, you can complicate this if you want to, but I'm just gonna make a pattern out of this piece of paper. That's good. We'll draw a line across here. Line's pretty well on. What's going on? I can trim a little bit off this bottom piece over here. Okay. See what I got going on there? Just got a piece of paper. Ah. That's 
Now if I took it down a little bit more, it'd be right on the money. We're big enough for what I'm big. We're big enough for this. I want the bottom big enough for that rubber. I don't want the this small part to be too small for the rubber. I want big enough for that. And we have that. We, yes, we do. We have to figure out the mount. We want a little thickness for the mount, so we got to cut some off the top here uh, to make it a little bit shorter. We get her. We got a rubber wash or rubber. Um, when we get the the square stock all made, then we'll weld the washer to it. Also, I want to. We'll go through that. Let's do this. Let's cut a little more off it. And the reason I'm going to cut more off it because I have to allow for the rubber mount. Let's try that. And if we need more off it, we cut more off it. Just guessed at that, just looked across it, seemed pretty good to me. So if I mounted that up in there, I'll have enough room for probably the same amount of rubber that they had originally. So let's take this, let's make something. Uh, let's make something. Piece square stock. We want to do the square stock. Um, that piece there. I'm going to do this. Put that there like that. I'm going to mark it there. How long it is. I'm just marking how long it was. Let's do the exact same thing. Let's do that. What I want to do is I want to close off. That's quite a small piece to be holding with my hand. I'm going to get a pair of ice grips. I want to close it off, so I'm going to put angles on it so I can weld all the square stock together. That's what I'm going to do. I think that's a great idea. I do not want any ends of the square stock open. I do not. And what I'll do is I'll make two at a time. So if I cut this one, I get this one looking right, well then I'm going to make two. Because I need two, one for the other side. Thanks for coming back. We really appreciate it. Let's get this cut off. If it's not cut straight, we'll use one of these to make it straight. And all I'm doing is sanding it so it's straight. When I cut it off, sometimes they don't go perfectly straight. So we'll sand it straight. And it does not much matter um, if it's not perfectly straight. Is that the ones we want? On the back, it usually tells you what grip that is. That's an 80 grit. I want a rougher one. I want a 36 grit. You can tell on the back when you look at them. 36, coarse. Where did I put that? We'll get that sander thing in. There is the original rubber out of the car. So that's what we're looking for. We want to go somewhere like that in the end. That's how thick it was, and it's worn out, obviously. Alrighty. I'm going to sand this one straight so it's right. That way there, um, I can make the pattern off a good one. And no sense making a pattern off something that's crooked. So we'll just sand that straight. This one's straight. Let's 
straighten this out a little bit. Make another one. bad not bad pretty good cut take a little bit off that is the bottom of the mount that we're going for that is the bottom so I probably should uh, I could drill a hole now or I can drill it later I guess it does not much matter I'm still have enough room Okay, so we got this piece going here. We're using the piece of paper and as the pattern that we want. Look at that, now it's not bad. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it off. Pretty basic, easy way to do it, I would say. Then trying to find a bunch of angles and stuff like that, just have a paper pattern. That one. quite nicely. Let's make another one. I generally always use the first one that I cut as my pattern. That's generally what I always do. I usually use the first one that way there. We're basically going off the same one every time. Nice cut. Nice cut, Chad. Nice cut. Something like this that I'm doing here, fixing this floor in this car. <laughs> you know, what can I say? There's a lot of cars out there that, you know, have been shingled. And what I mean by shingled is a piece of metal put over top. Exactly same thing what I did in the trunk. I shingled it because I put a piece of metal over top of some pinholes. I did it totally opposite what I'm doing here. But once you get the car cleared out, you really can see how to replace it. Take the sander. Watch the trigger, because it's happy.
you really have to be careful of a 36 grit. It, it, will, it will eat you up. Uh, you really have to be careful. It'll, it'll sand your thumb off, that's for sure. So there's our pattern. There's what we made for a pattern that fits. So basically I'm using this as a pattern. So I'm using that. That goes there. That goes there. And that goes there. And I'm saying, in the end, that's going to fit because that pattern seemed to fit. Um, There's no, I didn't have to find any angles. I didn't have to do anything. All I did is drew a piece of paper, and cut it, and then I'm, I'm putting it together. So um, to complicate something like that when I do not have to, to me, that's the way to rock and roll. I've got a welder. Move this out of the way. Um, it's time to play. We'll just tack that together for now. Just want to see how I want to. I've got it on my paper pattern. Just going to lay my ground there. Take a look at it. It's still there. Now I'm going to take a look at this side. Let's get that piece up to that top of that pattern. Do this. Actually, I'll just tack it together. Sand that off so I get to lay down. Do the next one. Just using the pattern that I I'm trying to get it the same. And if it's not exactly the same. We'll cut the rubber accordingly. You know, if it's not exactly the same, then when we cut the rubber, this this stuff, then we'll cut it accordingly. You know, if it needs a little bit or whatever. Just trying to get on a little bit moving it. I have to be careful sometimes of which one welded, which one. Good. Awesome. Let's do it on this side, get it in place. Uh, missed it. Now I gotta tack that together. I'll just weld that up. Just trying to hold on a little bit longer when I threw the weld on it because I want it to penetrate. Yes, we do.
You want to throw a half decent weld on in there because you're not going to get your grinder in there to get that off. Nice and hot, should weld up good. Let's get it ground off and then see what we have. And then we have to, still not over yet, we still gotta draw a hole and we're gonna have to apply a washer. It's hot, no doubt in my mind, it's hot. Ah -ha. Not as hot as you, Jolene, baby, but it's hot. We'll grind this off. Complicating it at all. We're just kind of just kind of making a pattern and, and then making it out of steel and then we're gonna try it. Six grip, it will it will it will sand your fingers off. It will. I have a couple washers that come out of the car original. That is the mount originally out of it. Got a couple washers over here. I'll bring them over to you, baby. These are the original washers. Now I'm going to want to. Um, weld these on the bottom of this and the reason I want to weld these on the bottom of that is because I want when I put the boat roller on or the original washer that that washer is going to be on there hitting that rubber so I'm going to drill a hole in this don't like drilling holes but I'm going to drill one Let's get the center. Line her up. Oh, gotta plug her in, Teddy. Come on. Just gonna put her in the center if I can. Should be able to eye that up. If I can get her. Ah, don't want to take off on me. 
taking off. Let me get in. Stop it. Why is it doing that to me? It's not too bad. I'm going to go with it. I got two holes of drill, and I do not want that. I want that drill bit to last <laughs> till I get the two holes done. If you know what I'm trying to tell you, I got two holes of drill. piece is hot. Can't tell, can you? My sneakers are smoking. Stop it. Okay. Take that. Got the first one drilled. Let's get the second one drilled. Are we able to pause so I can use the little boy's room to have a nervous pee? Pause. Back to the second hole. We're going to drill the second one. Ba, 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 ba. Stop it. Two holes drilled. Awesome. That makes me happy. Just gonna take that 36 grit on the top of that, try to get the little rough things out of there. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but awesome. Now, we have these washers that we have to deal with. I'm going to take a pair of ice grips. These are the original washers off the Plymouth. Just going to smooth them up, clean them up. Very careful with 36 grit, like it's, it's, it's quite something. It's, you watch it sand that metal. Yeah. Down our hole. And we'll weld that on there. I don't know if I want to weld it on from the top side or the bottom side. I think the bottom side would be fine. That way there you won't see it and I can buff it off. This over there. If that makes sense. Put it on the hole.
to the other side. Think any sanding required? This one. I guess. Yeah. Now we we can see how big a rubber we're going to need by the length of the distance by what's going on with there. So what I'll end up doing is I'll end up putting my bolt down through. It's kind of a bit hot right now at the present moment. But I can show you exactly. I'm just going to come back out again and grab that rubber. And what I need is just take a look. Put that rubber on there. So we'll just gear up with just a little thicker rubber and then we'll weld that on there. We'll put a bolt down through that. Give yourself some gap. And that'll be a nice looking mount for what's going on. And we'll do one for, well we obviously got one on this side, one on that side. We'll get the rubber the right distance. Um, we'll have to uh, we'll cut some rubbers and put in there. You see me cut the rubbers the other day, so we'll get it cut just a little bit thicker. Well, actually, you don't even have to go too thick because that'd be a nice distance for penetration. Um, we have a nice washer on the bottom that'll hit the rubber, and then we'll go down through. And then we'll do one for the other side. So we've got the back seat area pretty well looking pretty good. We've got to finish welding it up a little bit, but uh, to make the mounts, um, you could say, well, that's kind of a hard thing to make, but you see me make it with a piece of paper, and then I just went to the outside of it and traced them and put them on. Now I have to mount them up and do stuff like that. Let's step back for a second. There's we are. And let's do this. As as I'm looking at the car. Um, I would like to have sills made for the car. We're going to put brand new sills on it. In order to make the sill, I may as well take the complete sill and have a pattern of it. Hmm. And I'm basically thinking about just cutting it off and uh, going for it. But I need a measurement. I think that's fine for now. That's fine for now. All right, everybody, there's two mounts that I made for the back, and you can see the distance of them right there. That's what they had. If you look at what they had, they had sheet metal with two little tabs. Um, I'm thinking someone said that you could buy some of the panels for this, but to be honest with you, uh, when we're done, um, I don't know if you would get all that little small stuff that is required to let them panels fit. When you pull a floor out, uh, there's not too many times that you buy panels that you have everything and you have to start to make stuff. Um, with this way here, um, I have no, there's no rules. For what I'm doing here right now, it can be done totally different. The mount can be made totally different. Um, the floor can be made to go down on top of the frame. Um, it can, there's so many different things that you can do. So when you get it cleaned out and get looking at it to make them cross members and make the tunnel, um, there's so many ways to do it, but this is the way I'm doing it. And I hope it motivates you that you can do it. And uh, I know, and I think a lot of other people know, that there's lots of old cars like this 
that need a floor that really do. And uh, when I'm done, um, it's going to actually have an, an awesome floor. It's not going to look like it's cut up from the bottom. We'll end up all the square stock. We'll end it. We'll finish it somehow so you cannot see it. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for coming back. We just wanted to make a couple mounts in the back to show you where we're going. The next step where I have that mounted in the back, we have that flat piece for the back seat to set. Then we're going to start up front and we're going to fabricate square stock and run it back to start our tunnel to know where we're going. Do you want me to cut the sill off? I was thinking about it. I, gotta, I, I, I can't get a sill made for it if I do not. Well, then again, I should have a measurement there, shouldn't I? And it's not doing anything anymore because we have this all tied in here. We should have. There it seems to be. We we're all tied in at the front there. We're all tied in at the back. I should be able to cut this off. I just want to do this first. I want to take a measurement and then I'll know. What I want is, when I take and get the sill made, I want it long enough that I can come over on halfway of this, or even all the way. I'm thinking halfway would be great, so three inch would give me halfway on top of that. We are coming up there a little bit on that, I've noticed. No, that's just the tape. <laughs> three inch. Nope, farthest distance. The farthest distance is right there. And we'll have to cut it to fit. Three and a half. I'm just measuring the distance from this edge here to over here. This bar right here is not running straight. It's tighter in the back than it is the front. So I'm going to have to have the... F this is only... Three and a half here. This is almost three and three quarter up here, but you're four, so we'll make it the longest. What did I say I wanted? It? Just a little visual for you. How many sills have we got? Let's, we'll kind of count here in a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. How many sills we got? Like, like three, doesn't it? One, two, three.
And the only reason I cut that out is because I have to have it cut out to repair it. And I'm going to end up cutting it out right to the front. I just wanted to cut that out there now. we got the square stock that's holding us in there. We'll get this piece dug out after we get the sill. We'll get that piece dug out. We'll put the sill on with the door on. So when the door's on like that, we know it fits. Then we'll put our sill on so we know it fits at the bottom of the door. I always like to put on the outside first because that is what we're looking at is the outside. I do not like building the inside and then coming outwards because sometimes or a lot of the times you end up trying to repair the inside what you fixed so you can get on the outside. So, sill is cut off and we're cooking with gas so we know what kind of sill we want. Well, it's one of those three. <laughs> but basically, basically, that's the sill I want right there. That, that, that. That, that, and in three and a half, in three and a half inches. All right, everybody, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. Don't let that scare you. Don't let that scare you. And the reason being is I've got it held together with the square stock. We've got it welded in there really good, just like the other side. So throw a comment, throw a like, throw, a, I don't know, do whatever you like. Get someone to subscribe. Thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. Um, this job is much easier when everything is out and then you can really take a look at it. Have a great day, everybody. If you want to make a map, just grab a piece of paper and make a pattern and go for it.